What's good everybody? In this video, what we're going to cover is the difference between Elementor and Bricks. For those who aren't familiar, Elementor and Bricks are pretty good page builders. I will try to be as objective as possible when comparing the two to really just show you transparently how these two compare when you start to really put together a website. I won't go through a whole tutorial of how to use the two. I'm going to try to compare the two with two different installations that I have running. One is Elementor and one is Bricks. And I will share some of my thought process between the two. Now, I wanna share just one quick thought before we jump into my computer and start going through this comparison. I really think that when you look at these things objectively, it is your responsibility, my responsibility as a web developer to provide to our clients something that can actually help them grow and scale. If you deliver to your client a solution, and a year down the road, that solution is causing them chaos, then you have done them wrong. It is our responsibility to objectively provide something as good as possible. And of course, things can come up along the way, but for the most part, we need to do, to do our homework and research to make sure that we're equipping our clients with the right tools at the right time. And I think that Elementor has kind of been the one to break barriers and become like the the most mature all-in-one solution when it comes to using wordpress and like a no code page builder that these two are offering but again when we look under the hood hopefully you will agree with me on some of the things that we do along the way we're going to keep it very simple we're not going to run through an entire tutorial of each of them we will do step by step the same exact thing in both and randomly check them under the hood or with GT metrics to see what load time is like and so forth. So without me rambling any further, let's just dive into these two installations and go from there. So what you'll notice is I have here two installations of WordPress. One of them is Bricks and one of them is Elementor. I only saved you some of the time of launching these in Cloudways. I'm not affiliated with them in any way. You can host these websites however you want. This was just easy for me to launch without too much of a headache on the server side. And let's take a look at the plugins. Everything is clean. Let's go here as well. Clean as well. So Bricks and Elementor. You can see that we haven't done anything. Now, there is one plugin on both of these. This just, unfortunately, I can't remove. It comes along with all the Cloudway apps. I have disabled it but I can't get rid of it. So it's there. It is this guy right here, but we can't get rid of it. So that's the only thing. And again, the, the good thing is that it exists in both. So the comparison that we're going to be doing here is fair since it's on both sides. Let's start by just kind of getting things going for Elementor and getting things going for Bricks. So uh, for Elementor, I have prepared everything that we need. So we will go ahead and add the basic Elementor plugin. And this is the Elementor plugin, over 5 million installations. This plug, this uh, page builder really broke barriers when it comes to using it and producing really nice, you know, pages and websites without having to use code at all. So. I'm just trying to go through all these steps. Uh, now let's get the site name Elementor. We'll keep it at that, so just skip. I don't wanna add a logo, skip. I don't wanna browse through anything, skip. I just want Elementor, so here we are. So I'm going to hit continue. Let's activate container. I don't want anything, I just want the plugin. So let's see, we got Elementor. I'm going to add now Elementor Pro. So our agency, since uh, we used to use Elementor, I still have a subscription for some of our legacy clients that are on it. A lot of clients, we've moved them to Bricks since we handle all the maintenance and hosting and whatnot. It saved us a ton of headache. Let me connect and activate Elementor Pro. Okay, so I have activated Elementor Pro. We now have everything that we need from Elementor side to kind of get going. 
the next thing we're going to need to do is install Elementor's theme. So what we're going to do is add their hello theme, which is right here convenient for me. And I'm not going to activate this theme yet because I want this to be exactly like the bricks build that we're going to do, which will have a child theme. So I will add here a child theme. So I have prepared this already. Here is the child theme, install, and we will activate the child theme. Let's get rid of everything else that we have here. Again, I want two clean installations. So to recap, what we have here is Elementor's hello theme, which is what they strongly recommend. It's a clean theme that's pretty naked and just gives you the skeleton that you need to get going with Elementor and the child theme. The idea of the child theme, for those of you who aren't familiar, is so that way we can get from the parent theme a bunch of updates and not have uh, the website look any different or anything drastically change for us on the child theme. So we're only getting the essential updates and everything else is in the child theme. So I will now Let's take a look. So we have under the themes, we have the child and the parent. Under the plugins, we have Elementor and Elementor Pro. So we technically are good to go to create a page. I am going to, let me close that out. I am going to go to Bricks now. And for Bricks, there are no plugins that we need to install. What I will do is add a new theme since bricks is a theme and let me drag into here uh, the parent theme of bricks so there it is and in just a moment when this is done i will also install here the child theme for bricks so let's go ahead and do that now upload again and this one we do want to activate and let me just activate the license here as well. So I have to go to Bricks Builder. Now, you technically might not have to do this. The reason you have to do this for me is because the way that we're working now is by whitelisting websites that we work on. That way, our license can't get jeopardized in any way. Okay, so all I've done here is fast forward a little, that way I can activate the Bricks license and we are good to go. So Elementor is activated and ready to roll. Bricks, let's take a look at what we have here. It looks like I still have some themes I gotta get rid of. So let me get rid of these themes. So the installations are exactly the same. Okay, so I have here the child theme, parent theme, and here as well child theme, parent theme. Let's make sure we're using the latest and greatest. All right, so we are good to go. For plugins, again, Bricks doesn't need any additional plugins. For Elementor, it's, it's a lot different the way that it's built. So we're going to need Elementor and Elementor Pro. The hello theme wouldn't really do anything or allow us to really build anything without these two. So these two, are essentially the page builder. This one is kind of the basic version and this one is with all the bells and whistles and latest and greatest that they are releasing. Let's go ahead and dive in here. So I'm gonna go to all pages and I want to trash everything that's here and I'm gonna go to all pages here, trash everything that's there. Again, we want a really clean installation so now let's call this the home page edit with bricks and let's create another page here this will be the home page and edit with elementor so we have the same exact build it looks like elementor is taking a little longer to load again these installations are exactly the same on the same server I'm not fast forwarding the video on purpose. I want you all to see what this looks like 
without me doing anything. It looks like it's already suggesting for me to enable safe mode. I'm going to try to just reload this. Okay, so it looks like it loaded. So let's talk about what just happened. This is something that happens, I wouldn't say often, but it comes up. And it comes up in the most annoying of situations. Sometimes you're just coming in to do a quick update and all of a sudden the builder is not loading or something is acting up. The Bricks Builder was built with Vue, which is a super fast and lean JavaScript framework and Elementor is not. So again, we're dealing here with two different plugins that are working together to provide us this. Elementor in all fairness is a lot more mature. So there are a lot more plugins and integrations that you can kind of get going right out the box where with Bricks, you won't have that yet or you'll have some limited option. But in the past year or so, Bricks has matured a ton. I'm gonna go ahead and just add a, let's do a section. Let's go from here. I'm gonna add, so it added a section and let's take a look at the navigator that way and let me squeeze it over here so this looks exactly the same. So we have here a section, then a column, and now I'm gonna throw into it just a heading. So let's just say Bricks versus Elementor demo. So I am going to hit publish. And let's do the same thing here. So I will add a section and it automatically added a container for me. Let's add a heading. And in this heading, I'm going to say the same thing. Let's do Bricks versus Elementor demo. Okay, I'm gonna hit save and let's go back so that we can preview. Again, Elementor is just a little slower and choppier. New options, now you can choose where you want to go on the site or the following. Let's just do WordPress dashboard apply, uh, leave page. Okay, so I wanna make sure that when you load this website, you do get the page. So it looks like we just need to define the page. So I'm gonna to go to settings here and into reading and where it says your homepage, I'm going to change it to be the homepage. And now when I refresh here, there it is. So that's what we just built, Bricks versus Elementor demo. And let's go to Bricks and view the same thing. So I'm gonna go to this homepage and grab that. And hello world. So it looks like we need to go and do the same thing here. So I'm gonna go under settings, reading, set the static page to be the home page. And now when we go to bricks and refresh, so now we have the same exact build for both of these. Now, let's take a look at what's happening under the hood. So I'm gonna right click and inspect, and I wanna take a look at just what we added here. So in bricks, we have here a section like we added, and then we have a div. And then we have our H3 tag, which is bricks versus Elementor dash demo. So this is pretty much the entire section that we just added. Let's take a look at Elementor and here is where you really start to see the difference. So it looks like there's some style stuff above our H2 tag that I did not add. And it looks like there's a div above our h2 tag and I will keep going up. There's then another div and another div and another div and another div. This is crazy. And then finally the section that we added. So this is our section and within it there is a bunch of div tags that come from Elementor until we finally have our h2 tag. And this highlights to us the biggest fundamental difference between the two. One of them requires two plugins just to get started and then those plugins add a ton of bloat in order for you to actually get going. And all I did here was add one single heading and I have here one, two, three, four, 
five different div tags, and then finally my section, where with bricks, all I have is my section and then a div and then H3. So imagine if you started to build out a website like this, how crazy it would get to start maintaining the Elementor build. Now, in all fairness, you can really build a beautiful website with Elementor. The problem becomes when you need to maintain it. The bigger the website gets, the harder it is to maintain because there's so much bloat. Now, let's take a look at the back end a little bit. So I'm gonna close this and let's dive into what's happening behind the scenes. So I'm gonna go here to, uh, we are in Elementor. So let me go to the Elementor settings and I'm gonna go here as well to the bricks settings. So here's another huge difference. With Elementor, we have some general stuff and then integrations that we can start to add API keys uh, for something like MailChimp or Facebook SDK. If you're advertising, if you want reCAPTCHA, things along those lines, then we have some advanced features and then some more features. In Bricks, we have general, then builder access, templates. So this is pretty cool. You can add here a remote location of your template and you'll have access to a bunch of other templates that Bricks didn't provide to you in the beginning. Now, you can keep changing this URL to pull in different templates, and it's really cool and smooth the way that it works. With Elementor, you would have to have maybe a different plugin and so forth that would allow you to pull in a bunch of new you know, themes. So one huge one is Elementor Kit. If we go into plugins, and add new. If we type in here, I'm not going to go through adding it, but if you type into here Elementor, you just see all. So this is a big one. This is a big one. This is a big one. And typical builds with Elementor can really get to a point where you have about 10 to 15 plugins minimum to really get things going. With one, you get this feature. With the other one, you get, you know, different themes and designs and it adds on. And the fact that you start off with two plugins as it is is quite a lot and it gets harder to manage. There's more vulnerability here, there's a lot more to it. With Bricks, another big thing is the performance. So we're gonna run a test on that in just a minute. Now you can get to a point where your Elementor build is pretty good when it comes to loads and speed, but what you need to do on the Elementor side is, again, you would go here to plugins and maybe add something like um, auto optimize or whatever it's called and you know you would start handling let me see here I forget what it's called we can maybe just type performance so you can add any of these you know famous plugins super cache uh, light speed cache you can just type into here cache and add whatever plugin that you are with. If you want, you can use something like this where it comes built in, and then you can maybe add another plugin for optimization purposes and so forth. With Bricks, this is built right into the theme. So with no additional plugins, let's go ahead and go into GT Metrics, and let's check what we're getting right out the box with Elementor. So not too bad, 612 milliseconds of load time. Going to take bricks as well, and we'll do a comparison and run bricks. Okay, so right off the bat, we can tell that the page from Elementor is four times the size of bricks, and I haven't done anything. This is literally just one single section that I added, the same exact text, and one of them is starting to perform slower than the other, and the bloat is starting to happen right away. Now, you can imagine that the more we keep building here, the more it's gonna get crazier and crazier. So let me go ahead and do one more speed test just to be fair on Google. So we will take the same exact URLs throw them into Google to see what they are grading this website as. So which one did I take here? This is the Bricks version. 
we can go ahead and open this again and we will run the Elementor version. So I will take the Elementor side and analyze. Okay, so Bricks is already done. It looks like we're pretty close to 100 across the board. SEO, that's fair. I haven't really updated anything on the site for SEO to be good, but you can see right off the bat again that Bricks is pretty darn solid when you get up and running. And Elementor, we already lost a few points on accessibility and performance. SEO, again, that's fair. We haven't done anything for SEO to actually be good. So that's, that's fair. I would expect that. Let's see if we scroll down a little bit. First content paint, 1.5 seconds. Here, 2.5 seconds. So again, if we're comparing the two, I haven't done anything. All I added was a single line of text and we can already see the differences. Now, if we want to take it you know, to the next level, we can go back to both pages and on both sites, let's edit with Elementor and we don't need, oh, I, we needed that one. I'll go back to it and let's go to our homepage here with Bricks and edit with Bricks. Okay, so, in Bricks, let's go ahead and add maybe another section. And in this section, let's add, say, an image. Throw that into the container in there. So that's where we want it. And I am going to add this image is 122 kilobytes, nothing crazy. So there it is, save. And we will do the same thing. There it is again on Elementor. Let me refresh here and here we go. Now people are gonna comment that maybe you gotta increase the server's resources and so forth. That way these issues don't arise. I promise you this stuff happens with Elementor all the time. Let's do the same thing. We're going to add another section. In this section, we're going to add an image. And for this image, we will do the same exact image. So no alt text, just 122 kilobytes, the same exact thing. And let's hit update. Okay, so because I ran so many tests, GT Metrics gave me a pop-up to log in. So I, I went ahead and logged in. I'm going to do this once more. Here is the link for Elementor. So we will run this test again. And as soon as that is done, let's refresh here just to make sure. Yep. So we're, we'll take the bricks URL. Okay. So we're starting to march towards around a second of load time. And let me hit compare and put the second one and hit compare. And now it's going to run the second test. Let's take a look at what we got already from Google side. So from Google, again, I hit analyze already and we can see the images here on both. So the images are on both. And this is the Bricks one, we can see it from here. So it looks like Bricks so far has not, we started with 99, 100 and 100, and we're still at that point, even when adding the image. And it looks like with Elementor, we already lost a few more points. So again, I haven't done anything. I just added a heading and an image. So. Let's take a look now, and this is just the beginning. Can you imagine a full-blown website? So let's take a look now at GT Metrics. And with GT Metrics, we see that Elementor is already getting close to one second. Bricks is still holding on pretty strong. The total page size, understandably, I added here an image increased on Bricks side, but with Elementor even more and the amount of requests that we're making is still a lot more on Elementor. So again, you can just understand where this is headed. The more elements and things that we're going to add, the more we're gonna to need to combat what Elementor is doing under the hood, so that way it's still efficient. So on one hand, you get a lot of bells and whistles with Elementor, but on the other, you need to start battling with the way that this thing is built from the ground up because it's going to get pretty crazy. And we already have to remind you with Elementor, we already have here two plugins and we haven't started yet. 
So assume we add a security plugin, maybe a backup, maybe a caching plugin. Very quickly, you find yourself with close to 10 plugins and you haven't even gotten really going with your website. With Bricks, we're really finishing websites with one, two plugins at most, mainly for security and backup, and that's about it. And then it's more of like a case by case scenario where we're adding maybe something specific. Otherwise, you can already see that this is gonna get pretty crazy. Let's take a look again under the hood. So this is Bricks, and let me get Elementor. Let's put these guys right side by side here. So let's take a look at the image tag this time. Here we are with Bricks. We have a section, then a div, then the image. Elementor, let's right click, inspect. Here's our image. Again, it's throwing some styling in there. And then the div, and another div, and another div, and another, and another, and then finally the section. So again, one, two, three, four, five. We'll ignore this. So five different div tags were slapped on top of one another in order to get to a point where I have here a heading tag and then the image tag. This is just chaos. Okay, so I don't think that we need to keep building here for you all to understand where we're headed. All I did here was add a heading tag and an image tag. On the Elementor side, I found myself with over 10 divs and with bricks, I found myself with two sections nothing really bloated and the exact elements that I added, which was a heading tag and the image tag. Way cleaner, way faster, way smoother on the front side. On the back end, Bricks is built with Vue, as I've mentioned already, and Elementor is not. So you have a super fast experience with one over the other that's fully bloated on the back end as well. One requires you to have on the very basic level two plugins, the other one, no plugins. If you really want to deal with a super efficient page builder that lets you do everything you want, I would go with Bricks. If you somehow feel the need for AI on the back end and want some extra bells and whistles that you might find when really looking into little details about the differences between Bricks and Elementor, stick with Elementor. But I promise you, it'll be super challenging for you to actually scale your agency or whatever you're doing if you stick with Elementor long-term. The more you add, the more you grow, the crazier it gets with the code on the front side and on the back side. And that's that. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you'd like to support the channel, give it a thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe.